Okay, today I'm going to be just uh, doing a few um, edits to this website. Um, I'm going to look at how to firstly edit this uh, feature slider, increase the, the depth. I'm going to show you how to get these um, borders on the side of the tabs. I'm going to show you how to add padding on top and on, on the bottom of the logo here. And I'm going to show you how to make sure that the text throughout the website is using the correct font, which in this case is Roboto, which is a free Google font. Then I'm going to sh also um, show you how to add a full width um, background section and also edit the, the color of the text specifically. Okay. So I'm going to go to our dashboard and just to start with I'm just going to um, clean up the plugin section. There's a few plugins we don't need. Um, well for one, Akismet is no longer free so I'm going to just delete that and use a different plugin. Um, we don't need the custom sidebars. Don't need easy Google fonts. Uh, we don't need Hello Dolly. Hello Dolly is absolutely useless, so we can just delete it. We don't want to feature a recent tweets widget, so we can delete that. The events calendar. We're not going to need that. WordPress, Google Maps, and we're not going to, uh, I don't think we're going to need that. We can always add it later. So I'm going to deactivate all of those. I'm going to choose the same ones again. I'm going to apply those changes. Okay, so hopefully we're only left with only what we need. Um, and I'm just going to quickly add a couple more because I can see there's no protection against um, spamming at this point. So I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to add a, um, an alternative to a kismet, which is anti-spam B. It's going to stop all, all the comment spam that we've been receiving. Another one I want to add is um, I want to add disable comments because we're not using comment features in our website, in this particular website. And with disable comments, I'm just going to go to the settings and disable it across the whole website. So to begin with, let's start with the fonts. Um, actually, to begin with, I just want to up, make sure that this theme is up to date. I'm going to go to 
to themes and click update. So with the fonts, <clears throat> I'm going to go to the B theme options. And I'll click on fonts. And here's where you choose what font you want for your website. So we've already got Roboto selected. Uh, the menu font, which is up here, I'd also like to, to use Roboto. The page title font, which is this. This is the page title here. This is the page title, and I want that also to be Roboto. So I'm going to choose that. And I'm going to choose Roboto all throughout the site. And this here, um, it's asking how many font styles to load. So if you want a bold version of Roboto, the, the code for it uh, in Google Fonts is actually 700. Um, the regular version of Roboto is 400. So we definitely want that. Uh, we definitely want the bold. And just know that whatever fonts you do load or you do select here, it's going to increase the, the, the loading time of the website for each page. So you don't want to really choose all of these. You only want to choose uh, what you need. So I'm going to bold italic and regular italic and regular. And I think we want light as well. I'll save that. Just refresh the, the website, it should automatically show you the change. Okay, so I can I can see that the the fonts have automatically changed, which is great. So I'm gonna inspect this and see exactly what font it's using, because I'm not sure if it's using the right font. So it should be using Roboto, but I don't know if it is. Might be it's using Open Sans, okay? There's font family open sans. The reason why this particular thing is using um, a font that we didn't select is because this area is the Revolution Slider. And Revolution Slider has its own uh, inbuilt style. So we need to go into that uh, at some point and just update uh, the styles that we're using to incorporate Roboto. Um, so now I want to work on stick with the fonts and change the font styles uh, of the headings and the, the, the body copy, which is anything that's um, about this size. Um, according to my design, if we go back to my design, the body copy is 17 pixels in size and with the line height, this is line height of 29 pixels. So let me go to the theme options, go under font and size. Okay, so the content, we want that to be 17. The main menu, uh, let's just quickly check that one. So that's this here. That's 16, so let's make that 16. And the heading one. So heading one should be your biggest heading size. Uh, sorry, heading two should be your biggest. And then heading three is a bit smaller, heading four a bit smaller than that. 
so on and so forth. Heading one is for your sub page header titles. So I want to go back to the design of the sub page. This is what heading one should be. Um, and we've chosen 71 uh, pixels. You can make it 70, it's fine. Let's go with a nice even number. And it only goes up to 70. And the heading two, if we go back to our design, this is heading two, our next biggest heading size. And we've got that set to 38 pixels in size. And it should be, the, the line height should always be about between six and eight uh, pixels more than the size. So 38 over 46 should be fine. Let's change this to 38 and just adjust these accordingly. Heading 6 should never be smaller than the content size. Save this. Okay, so I'm going to save these changes. And I'm going to check out the website. I'm going to refresh the home page. Okay, and we can see here the webs the, the, the fonts have been changed. And we're gonna to have to go in and just change these um, fonts that we're using, change them to the appropriate sizes. So we'll probably change these to uh, heading three or four, and this one as well to H3 or H4. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to edit the um, default accent colors for the website. So the accent color is any link um, button, default button colors, as you can see here, the hover color for the tabs. At the moment, it's a default blue color, but we want to use the default um, Ubumba Solutions green or turquoise, which I can see you've used here. So we're going to, to do that. We're going to go back to the theme options and going to go to the colors section there we go so you can for, for this particular wordpress theme you can choose a one kind of color install um, and that's going to i'll show you what that's going to do first let me just find out what our color is Copy this code here, and I'm going to change this. I'm going to paste that and save. I'm going to refresh the website. And it hasn't uh, changed the header. Let me see if it's changed the default on the other pages. No, so it's still using this blue here. So I'm going to go back to the theme options uh, because we've got we've got this selected custom skin, but actually you want to choose a one color skin for the time being. So I'll choose that and click save, and I'll refresh the website. Okay, perfect. So now it's taking our default Ubama Solutions green color. Um, as you can see, it's also changed this section here to a, like a light, lighter gray. Um, uh, this default button is now the default green that we want. Okay, if we go back to the home page. Um, okay, th 
the slider has been affected and the hover state or the hover color for these tabs has, has changed. So I like to have more control over the colors on, on the website. So I'll go a custom skin and I'll save that. And then I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to go into each section and, and choose the colors I want. Basically anywhere that this blue color appears, I'm just going to change it to the, the color we want and save after every, after every section that I edit. link color and you can see here the link hover color is actually a slightly darker color um, so I just want to quickly just create a slightly darker color as a hover and I'll choose OK and I'll just select this box and select my eyedropper tool and I'll click here and then this is now the color that we selected so I'll click there and I'll copy this code here. Okay, so I'll paste that in and it also appears here, the darker color. And for these ones, I'm just gonna make them default. Color that we wanna use. For the footer, I'm just going to go to the design and see what we had done there. Okay, so we'd gone with quite a dark footer color. Of color. I'm going to just go back to this little box we created. I'm going to copy this. And the footer background. Um, Let's just select the eyedropper tool and just click I and it's quite dark. In fact, it's black. I'm just going to make this slightly less dark. Let's go with something like one, 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 one. It's fairly close to, to completely black. Don't forget the hashtag. And to save as well. Sliding top, we don't have to worry about that because we're not using it. Headings. Um, Let's change that to 333, 333, um, the heading color. So I'll go to Pundit, I'll go back to my design, and this is the heading color that they're referring to. And I'll just highlight that text and click this button here. And I can see here it's 333, 333, as and so is the text, the body text. I'll 
I'll save that. Short codes. Okay, we also want to edit these. Um, so let me grab my default color. And replace all of these. And we can always, if you want to change these at any stage, it's really easy to do that. So we can do that later. Um, let's make this get in touch background the purple color. Okay, so I'm going to refresh the website now and see how that looks. Let me also just um, edit this sliding top section. Why not? Might affect some other things that we, we that we didn't think it would affect. I'm going to refresh the page. Okay. Um, and there's that get in touch um, background color that we that we changed. We decided we wanted that to be different, and I think it's quite nice actually to have a bit of a point of difference in the website. Uh, I can see the buttons are still the old color, so we don't want that. So I'm going to go back to the theme options and just check why that didn't adjust. Oh, okay, so pretty crucial one that we didn't change here. Color for highlighted buttons, icons, and other small elements. So let's change that. We'll save it. Now when I refresh the website, that button should change to green. Yep, perfect. And let's also check the home page. Perfect. Let's also change these buttons back to the green that we want. Okay, so the next uh, thing we're going to look at is the... how to add this purple background behind here, um, which we've got in the design. Okay, this purple. So I'm gonna just eye drop this, um, find this color and copy that code. So I'm gonna edit this page now. Okay. 
and here is the section that has the get in uh, that has this call to action. A call to action is just um, a bit of text that asks the the reader to to do something to make an action. So in this case, we want them to actually call Ubuntu Solutions. So this is a call to action here. Uh, another call to action would be this uh, button. Um, you're, once again, you're asking the, the, the user of the website to do something specifically. Um, you're, saying to, you're asking them to view the services. So that's another call to action. A button is a, is a call to action as well. So we're going to change the, the color of this section here. What we have to do is we have to go to our, the column that the text lives inside. And actually we have to um, we have to separate this section with these three services or service categories and yeah, separate it, create a separate section for the services and create a separate section for the call to action at the bottom here. At the moment, they're in the same section. Um, so what I have to do is I have to add a section. I'm just going to drag and drop this one in here. And then from there, I can actually go in. I'll just do that again. I'll edit the background for that particular section to add a purple background. So click here. Um, we're going to call this section a call to action. Um, we don't want a background image, but we do want a background color. So I already copied that color from before. And we want the text. the text to be okay we want a we want it to be full width and column margin well, we can just add pattern padding at the bottom um, for now, I'll add 10, but we're going to come in and adjust it again because I don't think 10 pixels on at the bottom and top will be enough. And if we save this, now I'm going to make sure that the text itself is white. Um, so I'm just going to grab this text, uh, remove it from there, I'm going to paste it here. And I want it to be a bit smaller than it was before. Um, so I don't have our, we don't have our um, WordPress, uh, what you see is what you get editor options here. Um, that's going to make it a bit harder to um, manipulate this text. So I'm going to have to quickly go and do that. Um, but for now, I'll just uh, put it here. And I can see if I just toggle to the text, it's at H1. So H1, we don't want H1, we want H4. Or even h3 but let me try h4 for now and just copy this text and i'll remove it from here and then i'll add it here and i want the text to be centered and i'll just save that i'll update the page and refresh the home page to see what that looks like Okay, perfect. So we've got the nice purple color. As I mentioned before, 10 pixels padding at the top and 10 pixels at, uh, padding at the bottom, never going to be enough. So I'm just going to in, right click on this section, inspect, and then I'm going to find this section. Okay, here it is. I'm going to hover on these areas here until I find the one with the padding. There it is. See before, so the highlight there, there's no padding here. Well, you can't see that it's um, slightly blued out. But if I hover over this section, you can see there's 
um, this section here is slightly padded out and that's going to give me the, the padding at the top and padding at the bottom so if I I can just use this to test um, how much padding I want so let's try and make it 50 on the top and 50 on the bottom okay it's a bit too much on the bottom so let's make it 40 at the bottom okay, let's make it 37 okay let's make it 32 okay that's about right so now if I go back here to the home page and click on edit the section I said I wanted 50 at the top and 32 at the bottom and I'll save this And then I'm going to refresh this page. Perfect. And now we've got that nice padding there. But if I go back to my design, I would say there's still a bit more padding than um, than what we've got here. Um, so I'm just going to use my selection tool, and I'm just going to highlight this area here and see how much padding there is at the top. It's actually 96 um, pixels at the top or 95 and at the bottom 85. So I'm going to go back to that section and change it again. So 95 and 85. And I also want to change the size of this text. I want to change it to an H3. And refresh this page. Okay, that's much nicer. So we've got a nice padding there. Um, as I mentioned before, at the moment we don't have a the nice uh, editor here we and I really want those options to change the font color to change the heading size so we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to go into the plugins and install the plugin that we need which is called WP edit so let me add new WP edit Install now. Activate. And this row here at the top is what WordPress uh, displays by default. And there aren't many options here. We can only bold the text make it italic, we can put a strike through the text, we can make a list, a numbered list, we can do block quotes, and we can change the alignment of the text to left aligned, centered, right aligned. Here we can add links to the text or remove a link. A read more um, kind of link and a horizontal rule. We want to add uh, this, now this, um, plugin WP edit is giving us the option to add all of these other features that you'll probably get normally if you're using Microsoft Word or Excel or um, other programs like that. So I want to add underline and I'm just going to move it here. I want to add foreground color so I can change the color of the text. I want to add this uh, rubber or eraser tool which is which removes um, nasty formatting that the WordPress um, sometimes bring in, brings in. If you're copying from another site, website, and you paste text or even an image, it also sometimes copies the styling, the the, um, the styling on the that text that you copied or on that image that you copied. So this will just remove it. Um, character map, just in case you want to add a copyright symbol or a trademark symbol. Um, this can be handy. Um, you can indent or outdent your text and I 
want to add this is uh, you can change the background color of the text you never know where this could come in handy your tables okay this is a key one font family font size and format and you can also add this can't hurt the other thing we want here is uh, anchor text I'll explain what anchor is another day and superscript subscript in case you want to make the dollar sign smaller or if you want to make a trademark symbol really small and these other ones are not necessary this one's a good one to have non-breaking space what this does non-breaking space is let's say you want to have a some text and then you want to have three or four spaces but before a, a, a hyphen or, or another word if you were to do this without using um, this non-breaking space WordPress automatically removes those spaces. So by adding this, by using this to create those spaces, you can add that, that space there. And then I'm going to save the buttons. Now, if I go back to my home page, I'll go back to that um, section that we're working on, the call to action. Okay, I'm going to just copy this into the text editor. So I'll remove this. And I'm just going to use this text editor here, WordPress, the WordPress text editor, to, um, to style the text. So I'm going to use the rubber, rubber tool to just make sure there's no formatting on there. If I go back to my design, it's quite a big font so what we saw from before h4 simply wasn't enough so let's try h3 this time so i'm going to select the text and choose um, format heading three i also want this text to be white so i'm going to copy the uh, select the text and choose white but this number i actually want it to be purple oh sorry i want it to be green so I'm actually using a slightly brighter green than what I had been using on the website. So let me just use my hydrofoil tool and select that. Now I'm going to highlight this number and I'm going to change the color. I'm going to select custom. Okay, and that's perfect. So I'm going to now to copy into the relevant section, I'm just going to toggle over to text, select the copy, delete it from this section, and I'm going to add it to this section here. I'm going to click save update now if I refresh this page this should become white and it's bigger perfect so except for that little three on the end there let's just go in and, and edit that also notice that it's not bold which is a little bit frustrating so let's change that Okay, I'm just going to move this. For some reason, it added to sp it added a span early. Okay, that's better. So I'm going to actually move this back up to this section here. Make sure I'm on text, and I want this all to be bold. So I'm going to click 
bold. And then go back here, copy it, delete it, and paste it, and save it, <laughs> and update it. Okay, so I'll refresh the page. So this should become bold now. Perfect. Okay. Now my design isn't even using a bold font, so I, it's actually using regular. So I can actually go back and take that bold off. And I just want to do this quickly, so I'm just going to remove another way to check if something's bold is if it has a strong tag. But anyway, I'll just do it the proper way. Copy it, paste it back in here. Make sure you're on text. And I'm just going to highlight the copy and take bold off. So it should no longer be bold. Delete it from there and paste it back in here. Okay. But this time before I update, I'm going to change the size of this heading. So if I go to my design, it's a fair bit smaller. Um, we can probably go with an H4 for that one. Um, I'm going to grab all this text and I'm going to paste it into here, into the text section. At the moment, it's on heading one, but I want to use heading three. And if I go back to my design, this is bold, websites is bold, and then there's a soft return after that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bold this and give it a soft return. Same here, I'm going to take this up there and hold down shift, press enter, and that'll give it a soft return. I'm going to move this back up here. Now I'm going to give it a soft return, so I can bold this, and bold this. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my text, copy this, and save, and then update the page. So I've just updated the page and this is what we've got now. Um, so it didn't exactly go according to plan, um, but this is a nice font size um, in relation to how big our font was there on the design. But all the, the body text, um, it hasn't really incorporated the break, the line breaks that we wanted. So I'm going to go back here and see why it's not adding okay so there's no paragraphs here so I'm gonna have to go in manually and add paragraphs there so at the start of each little um, paragraph I'm just gonna add some code P and end it here with P and I want to have a line break here so the code HTML code for line break is bracket forward slash br bracket it's, 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 one of, it's one of the only HTML codes that doesn't need a opening and closing tag what I mean by opening and closing tag is this is an opening tag P and then a closing tag forward slash P that's an opening and closing tag. Another one would be H1, that's an opening tag, heading one, closing tag, forward slash H1. But as you can see, the break only has one, it only needs one. Sorry, uh, this should be, yes, that's right. So I'm actually writing that wrong there. Okay, so I'm gonna copy and paste that after every um, little segment or paragraph. I'm going to add opening and closing paragraph tags in all this text here. And I also want to, okay. I 
also want to add a button at the end of this. So I'm just going to create some more space there. And add a button. And the button title, I want it to be, go to my design, read more. Read more. Link for now. We want it to link to the services page. So I'll copy that link. I'll paste it there. Target is, I want it to be in the, um, I want it to open in the same window, not a new tab. Color, let's say default, actually let's say theme and the font color, well let's just leave that other stuff. Large, uh, I want it to be, let's say one. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this short code, paste it in here. Okay, I'm gonna update. I'm gonna refresh the home page. Okay, it's added the button. It's quite a large button, so I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to change this to zero. refresh the page so the button's smaller now but it's still not giving us it's not being very friendly with this um, spacing here so I'm gonna have to go back to this section I'm going to add that code that we added before to give it the correct spacing so I'm gonna add closing and opening paragraph tag and I'm gonna close it here and I'm going to add a line break. BR forward slash. Okay. So I'm going to do this for each paragraph. Save, update, and refresh the page. So that's looking much, much better. And that's it for now, and I'll tackle the next uh, few topics uh, in the next video. Thanks for watching.